The Yellowstone supervolcano has woken up. Earthquakes are shaking the region daily, and more than 1,000 strong tremors have been recorded in the last month alone. Magma is rising, and the pressure cooker is starting to heat up. When it blows, the entire planet will suffer. So this is your last chance to prepare. You need to know what to do when the unthinkable happens. And this knowledge could be the difference between life and death. This is Supervolcano Apocalypse, your survival guide. When the mighty Yellowstone supervolcano erupts, there will be no warning. Hot magma will burst through the Earth's crust and incinerate everything around it. In less than 60 seconds, the massive eruption column will shoot hundreds of miles into the air. But don't look up because that is not where the danger is. No, the real catastrophe will come from above. As the volcano explodes, tons of pulverized rock and ash will be thrown into the sky. The dark cloud will turn day into night. People who are outside will get burned alive by molten lava and poisonous gases. Entire cities will be wiped off the map and millions will perish. But if you have prepared correctly, you can survive the initial blast wave and make it through the aftermath. Here's how. Before we go further, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon for getting notifications. When the volcano strikes, you must take action immediately. If you live anywhere near Yellowstone National Park, which includes parts of Montana, Wyoming, and Idaho, run away from the danger zone, or you will be incinerated alive. Unfortunately, this means leaving your house behind. Most likely it will be destroyed anyway, so there is no point in trying to protect it. Grab your emergency bag and move at least 100 miles away from the blast zone. If you have a bug-out location far away from here, now is the time to head there. If you decide to stay home, you might think that closing all the windows and sealing all the doors will keep you safe. But that would be a huge mistake because an effective shelter against volcanic eruptions doesn't exist. Even if you build a Faraday cage in your home, it won't help. Volcanic ash is so abrasive that it can easily break through concrete walls and steel reinforcements. It will penetrate any man-made shelter and kill everyone inside. When the eruption column reaches tens of kilometers into the air, powerful winds will start to form. They will blow in all directions and reach speeds of over 100 miles per hour. These winds will pick up hot volcanic matter and hurl it into the surrounding countryside. Anything that is not completely enclosed will be destroyed, and even underground shelters will struggle to keep out the ash. So what should you do? Build a makeshift shelter that offers multiple layers of protection. First, find a low-lying area that is away from trees and power lines. Then use whatever materials you have available to dig a hole. Make it as deep as possible and cover it with sturdy planks of wood. Use rocks to hold them down and fill the bottom with sand and dirt. This will give you a small area that is protected from the blast wave, falling debris and pyroclastic flows. Just make sure to bring a shovel with you in your emergency kit, because you might need to dig yourself out after the eruption. While the chances of survival are slim, they are still there. However, things will get much harder after the initial blast subsides. Ash will rain down on your position and bury everything under a thick layer of grey dust. Each breath you take will burn your lungs like hot magma. Even though you might have survived the first moments of the eruption, the ash cloud will slowly suffocate you. Therefore, you must protect your air supply at all costs. Luckily, there are several ways to do this. First, you can activate your gas stove and cook some food. The flame will burn off most of the hazardous particles in the air. Just make sure that your ventilation fan is turned on while you're doing this. Alternatively, you can use a canister stove instead of the gas one. Next, you can boil water to remove some of the contaminants in the air. This will also give you a source of clean drinking water, which will be scarce after the eruption. If you have an air filter mask, now is the time to put it to good use. After the initial explosion, you can venture outside again, but only if you absolutely have to. If you're lucky enough to have an underground bunker, now is the time to go there. Otherwise, set up a safe room in your home. This is a place where you can lock yourself in and wait out the worst of the disaster. Find some plastic sheeting and tape it over the windows. This will block most of the ash and allow you to breathe relatively clean air inside. 
Make sure to bring enough food and water to last several weeks. If possible, store water in airtight containers and use bottled water for drinking. Also, bring flashlights and plenty of batteries to keep you going when the electricity inevitably goes out. Finally, bring a battery-powered radio to stay informed about the disaster and any rescue operations. During the first hours after the eruption, the air will be filled with volcanic ash and poisonous gases. It will be almost impossible to see through the thick grey cloud. Visibility will be reduced to only a few feet. Even your flashlight won't help much, because the ash cloud will reflect its beam back at you. If you have goggles, wear them to protect your eyes from burning. Also, consider putting on a gas mask if you have one. Otherwise, wrap a damp cloth around your mouth and nose. This will help filter out some of the ash and make breathing a little easier. After the skies clear up, another threat will emerge. Ash will start to rain down on your position and bury everything in sight under a thick layer of grey dust. This will continue for several days, and each breath you take will burn your lungs like hot magma. Therefore, you must protect your air supply at all costs. If you have a gas mask, now is the time to use it. If not, you can try making one from everyday items. Find some plastic sheeting and create a makeshift airtight mask. Cover your mouth and nose with it, and secure it with rubber bands. This won't offer much protection, but it will help filter out some of the ash in the air. Also, don't forget to cover up your entire body in a way that leaves only your eyes exposed. Otherwise, the ash will get everywhere and make breathing almost impossible. In the days following the eruption, you must watch out for earthquakes. The initial explosion will trigger a swarm of strong tremors that will shake the ground for miles around. These quakes will damage roads, bridges and other infrastructure. They may also trigger landslides and avalanches that can bury entire villages under tons of mud and rocks. The quakes will also damage roads and railways. The government will struggle to deliver aid and rescue workers to affected areas. This will make your survival even more difficult. But if you have a prepper mindset, you already have everything you need to survive the initial chaos. After the skies clear up and the roads are passable again, you can venture outside to assess the damage. If your neighborhood is still standing, you can try to salvage some supplies from your neighbor's houses. But be careful. Many people will be desperate for food and water after the disaster. There will be a lot of looting and rioting. And if you aren't prepared to defend yourself, you might end up dead. In the long term, surviving the supervolcano apocalypse will depend on how quickly you can rebuild society. The eruption will destroy the U.S. economy and cause global food shortages. Even if you have enough supplies to last a few months, you will eventually need to grow your own food and find new sources of income. The government will struggle to restore order in the aftermath of the disaster. It will take months or even years for essential services such as power, water and sewage to be restored. During this time, you must remain vigilant and prepared to defend yourself and your loved ones. Yellowstone is just one of many supervolcanoes around the world. Any one of them could erupt at any time and wipe out human civilization. We can't predict when this will happen, but we can be prepared. If you have a bug-out bag packed and a bug-out location ready to go, you'll be able to flee when the disaster strikes. If you can't evacuate, you must build a safe room in your home and stock it with enough supplies to last at least three weeks. Make sure to include food, water, medicine and other essentials in your stash, and don't forget to bring a battery-powered radio to stay informed about the disaster. Finally, learn first aid and CPR so you can help anyone who survives the initial blast. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon for more videos.